everyone, my name's Julie, and uh, I'm here to talk to you today about large code, ba code bases. What does this have to do with the House of Cards? Am I talking about this really awesome Netflix show with Kevin Spacey? No. I'm actually talking about this, a house made of very carefully balanced playing cards. Let me back up a little bit. I graduated from Pace University about a year ago with a computer science degree, and at that time, the largest application I had written had maybe 10 models. I worked on freelance projects, on school projects, but everything I did, I built all of the code. Then I started at Street Easy in August, whose code base was built in 2005, 2006. Hundreds of models, maybe billions of rows of code, and rows of data, and a whole pile of code. So this talk is hopefully going to prove an entertaining look at my first experience with a huge old code base, and how I have come to think of this code base as a house of cards, ready to crumble as soon as you let your guard down. So welcome to Street Easy. I spent my first week setting up my dev environment. There's so many dependencies to set up from the homebrew, the MySQL, we've got RVM, all the gems, Chef and Knife, Image Magic. And so coming from apps that I had built from scratch, I never had to set up someone else's code base before. Then you add on a pile of code, models, helpers, modules, views and partials, controllers, and a whole heap of metaprogramming. I'd never seen so much code in one place. And I even took that cool class where you get to build a compiler. That was nothing. Then you add on a ton of data. We've got city data, we've got user data, we've got listing data, recorded sales data. I never seen so much data. In fact, my first script that I wrote had to do with listing amenities and it ran on memory. I was shocked. I had never had to optimize a script just to run it because there was so much data. So all this adds up to a whole lot to learn. Not only was I learning about code, but I was learning about real estate. What are recorded sales? Why is a co-op different from a condo? What are MLSs and why does New York have so many regulations? What is all this code? What is the business logic? How does this code interact with each other? And what is all this data? What does it mean? How does the code use it? So we've surveyed the house of cards a little bit. Let's dive in with the first GitHub. I'm ready. But where? Where do I start? Google doesn't help. Google's great. It helps you solve a ton of problems, but it really can't help you find where this bug is. It takes a whole lot of detective work. I've never had to debug, understand, or fix somebody else's code. It's a, it's a really good skill to have to be able to inspect elements in the browser, follow a trail of views and partials, and trace methods in the debugger several levels deep to try and figure out what was going on when this was written. Learning to follow and understand these obscure trains of thought is a large part of my job. So in the process, congratulations, you found a five-year-old bug. The problematic line was last touched in 2007. Thanks, Skip Blame. So what do you do now? Are you even authorized to change such a thing? Was this even written like this on purpose? Figuring out the intent of that piece of code is very important before you try and fix it. You have to figure out kind of what design, what design decisions led to this. Is it detrimental to change those? Or are those just no longer applicable at all? If you use Git and version control to kind of discover why this line was written, you'll have a less likely chance of breaking the whole house of cards. Did it ever work? This is always a fun question. Was this, has this been broken for five years? I don't know. Maybe it has. Maybe it hasn't. <laughs> and what else is going to break when I fix this bug? Something important to learn is just because something was written in the past doesn't make it right. You think, but this code is so old. How could it be wrong? But past authors had crunch times, and they had other bugs, and they had bad days, and it wasn't always written perfectly. I mean, are you writing perfect code? Probably not. So just picture your future coworkers five years from now trying to make sense of the mess you're making. So comments like this, to do, make this not suck. <laughs> that we can find in various places around the Street Easy code base, but it's actually extremely helpful because as a developer coming in, you're like, why was this written? Did this person do this on purpose or like on accident? But if you see this, you're like, oh, they knew this sucked and they wanted you to come fix it in five years, so there you go. <laughs> you know you have to fix it. <laughs> And uh, specs help. I mean, specs stop people from misusing your code badly. Um, you're probably not going to spec every piece of code if you've got one of these giant apps, but uh, at least write some specs for something you think others are going to mess up. So you're in this debugging process, and sometimes you come to the point where you're like, where is this logic coming from? I think of this as a game of street easy magic or rails magic. So I'm trying to track down this bug, and I run into some unexpected behavior. And so I talk about these magical methods, like things that happen behind the scenes that are really useful, but trying to track them down can be kind of tricky. So you think, who is doing this? The questions you're asking are, who is doing this? Where is this coming from? What is this? OK, 
Can Google help? Again, not sure. Google helps you avoid asking a lot of dumb questions of your coworkers, so you kind of want to do your due diligence to make sure you're not just asking like how this Rails method works. So you're trying to Google the problem, trying to figure out what it is, but you can't find it. This is a clue that it might be street easy magic. It's a clue that it might be magic that your coworkers wrote in the past to help them out, but it's now kind of something you have to find and deal with. Some examples I'm talking about are um, things like URL for model and link to dialogue. Dirty easy magic or Rails magic? Well, they look kind of like URL4 and link to, so maybe I can look them up in the Rails doc. Well, surprise, they're street easy magic, and they're really useful and really awesome, but trying to find those in the Rails docs isn't going to be so helpful. Also, something like this, where we have an area model, and you can do an area sub Manhattan. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. That must be a Ruby trick. Like, I didn't know you could do sub whatever on a model. And uh, it's actually a street easy trick in which there is a nice uh, method that overrides the area accessor, the array accessor method there. Um, so that's always a fun one to find. And also something like this. Oh, the metaprogramming. If we haven't seen a send method before, this is going to look um, a bit daunting. So you're Googling what is being sent to who, what is this? And since the method is even from a parameter, the method that is being sent, um, it's like just tracking down some crazy stuff. So we got it covered. We're going to build a feature. The first question is always, how long is this going to take? And I'm like, I'm a pretty good programmer. Like, I know what I'm doing. This is going to take me one week. Famous last words. <laughs> you realize when you get in there, you're like, oh, wait. This doesn't actually work how I thought it was. I have to rebuild this in order to even start building my feature. Whenever you think about how long something's going to take, you pretty much always have to factor in the possibility that you're going to have to rebuild everything before you start building what you're going to build. Because it's not very likely that five years ago they knew what you were going to need that code for and built it right. And you'll probably feel the domino effect. This is where the house of cards comes in. You add a feature, and then it affects this really random distant piece of code. Sometimes a spec catches it. That's great. If not, you're going to get these really weird bugs starting to come up, and you're like, that can't possibly be related. Well, it probably is. That's what happens when you get this large piece of code that you're trying to change and manipulate. So. Building a feature is more like adding on to this huge house of cards. Learning and understanding the code base and its dependencies feels very fragile. It feels like you change one thing, and totally random things break that you had no idea were connected. It feels like this house is crumbling. When you fix one thing, another thing breaks. If you just carefully examine the structure of the house of cards before making changes, you have to check the foundation and dependencies, and do research on the weaknesses and potential places that could break with your new addition or modification. At some point, this kind of gets easier because you learn the feel of the code and you learn the whole code base and kind of how the pieces work together. I would say around like month three or month four, this kind of started to make sense, and I stopped breaking everything all the time. Um, and then my main takeaway is when dealing with other people's huge cold, old code bases, exercise the same care, caution, and patience that you would when remodeling or building onto it. 